Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Super pumped to be talking about holistic mental healing. We have Jonathan Toniola joining us on the show. Hi, Tony. Hi. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Super yeah. pumped for this episode. It was awesome meeting you at the Consciousness Hacking mm-hmm. party that we were just both at yeah. mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And after striking up a great conversation with you, I was like, this needs to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm pumped for this. For those who don't know, Tony's background. Tony's a graduate student at California Institute of Integral Studies, CIS, focused on psychedelic therapy, trauma integration, and developmental psychology. And you can find his high existence writer profile in the link in the bio, as well as his Facebook profile link. All right, Tony, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions to ask our guests. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? (laughs) Big question, yeah. Um, I think it depends on what you're reading and what your intuition says. I mean, if you read Steven Pinker, the world's getting better and better. We're on an upward curve, you know. And if you read someone like Chris Ryan or Derek Jensen, or what's going, or the news for that matter, you know. <laughs> um, the world's not doing too good. But my intuition tells me that we're uh, a caterpillar going into a cocoon. Mm disintegrating into the chrysalis to hopefully be reborn in something more beautiful. So. Oof. What do you think is a main principle that we need to embody for us to most effectively fly like that butterfly? Mm-hmm. Mm. I think we need to process our trauma and confront our shadows. Mm. I think a lot of the reasons why we have the crisis, the many crises that we have right now is because of disconnection from nature, mm-hmm. because we're disconnected from ourselves. Mm. Right? And so diving into that work, that personal work, figuring out your trauma, Figuring out what's blocking you from connecting with other people in the world around you. Dealing with that head on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's almost as though then we're born as this gorgeous gem that can express itself creatively and mm-hmm. bring beautiful fruits into the world. Mm-hmm. Yet there's some sort of like maybe like a dust or some sort of stuff on the gem that makes it like harder to shine. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the idea is that you kind of have to like Polish it off. You have to polish yourself off. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not sure. I've, um, uh, are you familiar with Charles Eisenstein at all? You? Uh, just <laughs> very recently, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Well, he, he talks a lot about civilization and, you know, the, the harm that it's done to this planet, but he sees it more um, as a journey, a necessary journey. So although we come into this world perfect with perfect beings, yeah the descent into chaos and having the dust come on are, is part of the, the overall journey and it's a necessary part. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be a hard game. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't be yeah. interesting otherwise. Yeah, it would be interesting otherwise, yeah. yeah. yeah you like, yeah, we always make the joke like you come and you like immediately know that you come from source and you know your north star and like mm-hmm. it's super easy to get there yeah. and everything else around you is just the cakewalk mm-hmm. and be like this is boring mm-hmm. but then when all of those things have chaos involved in them mm-hmm. it becomes more fun and that's why apparently there's a long line of vi the long list line of uh people that want to come souls that want to incarnate mm. on yeah we're the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, yeah. let's, let's talk about your journey. Mm-hmm. Who were you growing up and how did you get interested in what you care about today? Sure, yeah. So I grew up in a small island in South Carolina, Hilton Head Island. Um, grew up in an immigrant household. My family's from Brazil. And had a pretty, you know, standard, normal suburban upbringing. Um, but I was always very curious about the world and always asking questions, you know, as kids do. Um, 
but I kept that curiosity with me for up until my adult years. And um, so in high school, I read a lot of philosophy um, and read a lot of psychology. And one big triggering event for me was uh, the death of my best friend in high school. Um, How did he pass? Uh, it was a car accident, yeah. But so that event um, kind of like shot me into this deep, dark depression and asking deeper questions about death and the meaning of life. And, um, and that was a very challenging time. Um, and then uh, one summer during college, I uh, tried psilocybin mushrooms and that totally blew open my mind mm. and um, made me come to terms with his death and a lot of the questions that I was grappling with at the time about meaning, about you know, mm. death and life. And, and so... What were those realizations then? Um, that fundamentally we are okay mm. and that there is purpose and meaning to our lives and do we create that purpose or meaning ourselves on the, our journeys or what is the fundamental mm. yeah. that's a good question see I've been grappling with this the notion of fate and free will you yeah, know? yeah yeah so we just create our own purpose yeah. I think it's probably a, my sense is it's a mixture of both uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. so do you feel like it's one big artistic expression of creation that we're all in? Yeah. yeah. One big artistic expression of creation. Yes. <laughs> well, as, as Carl Sagan would say, we are the universe experience itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so mm -hmm. then, yeah, take us past the psilocybin experience. Yeah, sure, sure. So after that experience, um, I struggled to make sense of it and integrate it and um, decided to drop out of college where I was going to USC at the time and uh, spent some time in Colorado um, just reading a lot, diving into Alan Watts and Eckhart Tolle and just really trying to make sense of what happened and um, eventually stumbled across CIIS mm -hmm. found out that Alan Watts was a professor there and my heart, everything just clicked and I was like, that's where I need to be mm -hmm. And so I planned accordingly and made it happen. So, Okay, and that's how you landed then to do your uh, undergrad studies yeah. mm -hmm. there. They cool. had, they had a, a bachelor's completion program. Oh, yeah. So since I dropped out, I still had enough credits to mm -hmm. be accepted and finish within a year. So. And then how did you... So this is a... CIS is such an interesting place. It, it is. Yeah. The professors there are very interesting, like you just said, like Alan Watts and whatnot. But mm -hmm. then also... The disciplines there are super multidisciplinary, mm -hmm. and then that's actually what you got your bachelor's in is multidisciplinary mm -hmm. studies. Interdisciplinary studies. Interdisciplinary right. studies. Mm -hmm. So then, walk us through that process. Like, how did you get to pick what, you know, this is a very important thing actually. Actually, I would like to really plant a flag <laughs> in how important this is. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I agree, I'm yeah. not biased or anything, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. it's just, we're just, we're, we're carving ourselves uh, into these ruts of like, I'm going to only go for econ or only mm -hmm. psych mm -hmm. or only CS or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's disheartening sometimes because a lot of people in life succeed when they combine two disparate fields together or three mm -hmm. or four or ten mm -hmm. and then you get a more robust world view mm -hmm. and it actually makes you a better dialectic with your family your friends coworkers, people online yeah anyway totally. there's so many good I, reasons why yeah, yeah. I know. See, why don't you speak about yeah. this interdisciplinary pursuit yeah sure yeah well i, I think you're you're absolutely right um but that takes a lot of work and uh time to dive into different aspects of knowledge and reality. Um, and I think a lot of people are scared of the uncertainty that comes with that because, you know, if you just pick econ or engineering or business, let's say, you have a pretty clear path 
in front of you, mm -hmm. right? If you're just mm -hmm. cherry picking about, mm -hmm. you know, philosophy and this and that and that, there's a lot more uncertainty there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think moving into the future, it's going to be a crucial skill. You know, our world's becoming much more complex and, you know, it's not just a matter of us becoming multidisciplinary thinkers, it's a matter of combining these experts in siloed disciplines together mm -hmm. to form a multidisciplinary collective intelligence. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you were, as you were speaking, you would also reminded me that as soon as we open up more positions in the uh, post-study period of, of people's lives, that initial study period, mm -hmm. when we open up positions that are for interdisciplinary thinkers mm -hmm. and doers and creators, mm -hmm. then that'll make it like more like you have a clear track. Like when you say, I've picked these five disciplines, right. and then you're just like, damn, that's a good set of disciplines. Get into this mm -hmm. position that we need help with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Well, I mean, a lot of, as far as I understand, a lot of companies in Silicon Valley want you know, to hire philosophy grads yeah. because they're just so well versed in a bunch of different disciplines. So, yeah, and yeah. it's also becoming more and more important to have philosophers and ethicists uh, aligned mm. with the bioengineers and the neuroengineers right. and the AI engineers and blockchain mm. devs, all this type of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your journey with spirit. Mm -hmm. So. Tell us about it. Very love-hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how so? Yeah, so I, I grew up Catholic. Um, I went to Sunday school, First Communion, the works, right? Very um, committed Catholic growing up. Um, and once I started questioning Catholicism and exploring atheism a bit more, I just had so much resentment towards religion and anything that could be considered spirit. Um, and then eventually when I had a psilocybin experience, I found out what the meaning of God truly yeah, was. was. Yeah, it was, yeah. I was shown what religion is supposed to give you, yeah. which is a, a genuine mystical experience. Yes, yes. And a connection with the divine. And ever since that trip, um, you know, I have moments of despair and doubt, you know, but... By and large, I have faith that spirit is guiding my life and mm -hmm. the world at large. Mm -hmm. So, What does the connection with the divine feel like for you? Mm. A sense of deep peace. Mm. And as I mentioned earlier about one of my insights from mushrooms, a sense that fundamentally everything will be okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. How does one balance the piece of everything mm. going to be okay mm -hmm. with this it, what we just were talking about with this need for philosophers and ethicists mm -hmm. to be paired together with these exponential technology builders right. you know mm -hmm. there's like kind of like a you got to have a little like fire under your ass sure, to like sure. do that yeah 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 because totally. if you're just like if you're I just am passive, at peace I'm at peace let me just go yeah. off in a mountain and how does how yeah. does that work how, how does that balance work? that's a great question <laughs> I don't know if I could speak to it in words but I do um I do have this impulse to make the world a better place and fight for justice and love while at the same time cultivating that sense of peace that I know is at root what we are. Um, take, us, take us to a, like a basic decision. Like you can either choose to do something related to your hustle to bring change to the world mm -hmm. for the five hour chunk of time, mm -hmm. or you can choose to like go uh, take a hike by the ocean. You know, mm. these are hard decisions. They're to very hard. <laughs> <laughs> They're very hard. I wish I could give you a simple answer. Like, like prescriptive. You just need yeah, to do yeah, this. Yeah. 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 Um, Intuition has been guiding me in that regard. Mm. Um, figuring out what the next step is. When is it time to act? When is it time to retreat? Mm. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's sure. been cultivated. That intuition has been cultivated over the years. So. Where do you feel intuition? Just like my belly button. Belly button, like right under. This <laughs> 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 yeah. is yeah. like a gut. The gut feeling. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, 
I, I start with that and I how does it fil feel? filter it through. How does that feel? The intuition? Yeah, yeah. Well, depending on what the decision is or what the question is. Okay. Um, sometimes intu intuition could be a sharp constriction telling uh -huh. me don't do this. Other times it can be, yes, go forward. Okay. And that's a very... More like euphoric or yes, ecstatic? Yes, exactly. Like euphoric or ecstatic. And then where does, so where does that travel through? You were, you were saying it's traveling mm -hmm. through somewhere? Sure, yeah. It's, I, I definitely filter it through logic. Through reasoning. And, my, and reasoning, okay. yes. Okay. Um, and if those things align... Oh, okay. That's my North Star. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. And then when there's a, a, a non-alignment... A disconnect. Yeah. Then I need to take more time. Take your time. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And then this is kind of like how you can take your life on this where you feel really connected with spirit guiding you, but mm -hmm. at the same time you're still making these decisions with the combined sense of intuition plus reasoning mm -hmm. to decide and you can be patient when you need. Right. That's a really important one, would be patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, patience is in short supply nowadays. You gotta go, 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 go. I want enlightenment in a five minute yes. video. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys aren't enlightened by the end of this video, yeah. you're doing it wrong. Well, yeah. I'm just <laughs> Sadhguru says it so well that we spend like 12 years learning a language, but we want enlightenment in five minutes. Mm. Well, it kind of puts it in a perspective like, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. chill out and invest the time into working mm -hmm. and evolving your consciousness over time. Yeah, and at the deepest level, there's no rush, you know. Jeff Brown says the soul doesn't know a thing about deadlines. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, interesting. At the same time, though, it's like, Within the North Star, there is some sort of like a, I do have some sort of goals that I want to bring to the world during mm -hmm. this North Star journey. So technically, I don't want to, maybe I want to get one of the goals done by the time I'm 30 sure. instead of by the time I'm 60 mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I think it's important. And, and the example you bring up is to um, really connect with that intuition instead of the conditioning that tells you I need to have X before I'm 30, I need to mm. have Y yes. before I'm 35, or yes, et cetera. Yes. So. And then what about your, we talked about this a little bit on the journey with omniscience. So that's a mm -hmm. bit about your first, like, psilocybin experience, mm -hmm. tapping into that. Mm -hmm. what, and what does that omniscience, you, know, you said it feels like peace, that like all is in the direction that it's going. It's like along the Tao, this path, mm -hmm. the way. It's happening. Yes. Well, it can feel like peace. Yeah. It can feel like peace, yeah. Sometimes the journey is not so pleasant. Pleasant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but so what was it? It takes question? a lot of work, yeah. yeah. Just, we're just looking for more, a little bit more about omniscience, but we kind of touched on that. And then you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but a lot of the indigenous wisdoms are pointing towards our disconnection from nature being mm -hmm. the reason why we have so many of the mm -hmm. malevolences and how that, you said that for like that first principle that we could do to be a butterfly mm -hmm. civilization is by tuning more deeply inward mm -hmm. um, and also by tuning more deeply with nature, letting that tune us like a fork. Mm -hmm. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do um, <clears throat> the relationship with trauma and this holistic mental healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, regarding holistic mental healing, trauma is one piece. You know, okay. It's a very important piece, I would say. Are we all born with some sort of either like ancestral trauma? Mm -hmm. I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Or we get some trauma within the first like couple of months or years of mm -hmm. being a child or then within our teenage years, there's always... It's, Im I mean, it's, it's impossible you, you to show not, me yeah. one guy who goes through life without <laughs> accumulating trauma. I would call bullshit, but I mean, Stan Groff says, uh, you know, the, the birth is a trauma. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, and a bliss at the same time. So trauma mm -hmm. and ecstasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just, you're just like, no, I just, well, it's, just, it's just trauma. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I guess it can be both. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of just the, um, the constri being safe in the womb and then this constriction and birth into mm. this chaotic new environment Ooh. especially as a baby that's a vi that could be a very traumatic Whoa. experience and Stan Groff has written a lot about this people when they have um, holotropic breathwork sessions they can oftentimes access these memories from birth 
and the pain and suffering that they felt from birth. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Just from leaving the container of the womb into Absolutely. the chaos, yeah. like people can go back and like remember mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And he says, um, you know, that a lot of people have issues with like constriction. They process that trauma in the holotropic state and issues resolve. Hmm. It's incredible. Okay, so yeah, so tell, teach us about these processing trauma techniques. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you said that's only one part of the holistic, the holistic mental, mental Correct, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of different ways to heal trauma. Um, one of the most important pieces is to feel safe, to find a safe container to where you can process uh, trauma. Um, a lot of times you'll have to have uh, someone supporting you or guiding you. Mm. It's very difficult to fully process your trauma without um, having it short circuit because you just can't do it on your own. Mm. Um, so with you know psychedelic therapy, MDMA is really useful here because it gives you that sense of safety. You know, it deactivates the amygdala, which is responsible for your fear response. And it heightens activity in the prefrontal cortex. So that combined with psychotherapy, the safe container and the, and the guidance support mm-hmm. are all very conducive to healing trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, reconnecting with your body mm. is very important. When you're traumatized, you dissociate from your body. The body is a dangerous place, mm. right? Um, so any modality, somatic practice that helps you re-embody yoga, breath work, um, different forms of exercise, massage, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So could, for those that may not have like access to a psychedelic psychotherapy, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is something like, like what Ori does with holding space, mm-hmm. is that... Can we find like maybe a friend or a relative or mm-hmm. something like yeah. how does that work for trying on trauma integration? Yeah, I mean I'm still learning a lot about it, but my sense is that sometimes if um your support system isn't uh wise or knowledgeable enough, the trauma it can re traumatize you if it comes up and mm. it's not processed properly. It can re-traumatize you. So it's important that whoever is there to support you um, knows what they're doing. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So th- if we have like an experienced healer that mm-hmm. we're sitting down with, mm-hmm. then someone that can also help us realize that we ourselves are the ones that heal ourselves, not mm-hmm. like they're a guru sure, or something. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But right. So the, basically the better the person that we sit down with, Mm-hmm. Uh, the more we could even potentially get away with not needing a, a like a psychedelic psychotherapy yeah. or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Some for some people, it's like hell yeah, let's do that. For other people, it's like what else is there that I can try as well? And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's cool to see the different mm-hmm. potential paths mm-hmm. that one could do for this. I think it depends too on the severity of the trauma. Mm. If it's a very severe trauma, it's best to get some, like proper support. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's many traumas where you can just chip away gradually on your own yeah. through those mod- modalities that I mentioned. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, there's a really, like, I mean, really simple ones, like one's fear of like swimming pools or, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, just like, can you look at a swimming pool? Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. look at the swimming sure, yeah. pool. Can yeah. you look at it? You yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. you just like start like titrating yourself to Ex- like put a finger in exactly. the pool, etc. Yeah, yeah. Voluntary exposure to <laughs> what you fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. In, that's in, it. in manageable doses. In yeah. manageable doses. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Titrated voluntary exposure. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good band name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so. yeah, TVE, titrated <laughs> voluntary exposure. That's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. That's actually, I would say, a really big principle of it. Okay. Um, all right. So then, what are the other aspects of holistic mental mm-hmm. healing? Yes. Yeah. So I would say uh, diet is a big one. Ooh. 
you know, very fundamental things, proper hydration, mm. sleeping, um, but, mm -hmm. but diet specifically, a lot of, um, and diet is very muddy waters to uh, dive into, you know, everyone's biology is different, so it's, it's really about exploring and uh, experimenting with what works for you. Some people can have gluten, some people can't, you know, mm -hmm. um, so getting that in check is important. Um, so it's kind of like feeling, how, really tapping deeply into how you feel after you put stuff in your body. Mm -hmm. Intuitive eating. Intuitive eating. Yes. Yeah. Big practice. Yeah. And like harahachi boo, like eat until you're like 80% full or so. Mm -hmm. like don't overeat is right. like a main principle. Right, right. Yeah. Intermittent fasting is Intermittent useful. fasting is a massive one. Mm -hmm. Pretty useful. Don't just be like constantly eating things all day long but like mm -hmm. just have a meal at noon and a meal at six or whatever and mm -hmm. then just wait until the next day mm -hmm. and like and again some people yeah. can't do that their metabolism won't allow for it so okay so you really so have like to that even that principle of intermittent fasting is yeah. could only be good for like 80 percent of people or right, something right it just depends yeah so yeah and then um Hydration, you said for yeah. for diet as well. Mm -hmm. So the water is also one of those things where it's like certain people are like two cups a day, others are eight cups a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm like running a shitload in the heat, and so I need more water. Type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, tailor specifically yeah. to you. Yeah, depends yeah. on your exercise and everything else. Intuitive yeah. drinking. Intuitive drinking. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that too. Yeah, intuitive drinking. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Yeah. And then also, you know, um, relationships is a big one. Having nourishing, fulfilling relationships, um, finding work that you find nourishing, fulfilling. Mm. Um, the environment is a big one that people often leave out. You know, the, the spaces that are around you and more broadly society at large. You know, I think we have this spike in depression and anxiety and mental health issues. It's not because we're all genetically predisposed to it, right? Um, there is something happening in the broader environment that is con contributing to this epidemic that we see. It's why we, in many ways, why we left downtown San Francisco. Yeah. It's just not as conducive to spiritual growth mm -hmm. and mental health. Yeah, you, it, you know, there's pretty classic analogy about the bad or good apple in a bad barrel you know yeah you can't be a tuning fork in <laughs> the matrix for so long mm -hmm. to be able to go and and grow the, the the strength of the tuning fork by letting nature tune you better exactly and, yeah. and support you and in, in, into the direction of that you want to go in i mean if you're constantly using your energy to fight and swim upstream yeah you'll get burnt out and exhausted. You need an environment that supports your highest potential and highest calling. What percentage so. of us, that's massive, an environment that helps you get to your North Star, and what, mm -hmm. what percentage would you allocate, hypothetically, mm -hmm. of metropolis living to depression and anxiety? <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to throw out a number. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll try afterward, too. I'm going to say... 89%? No, 80, 80 to 90? I don't know. I, I, I think there's something... Oh, my up. God. Maybe you're right. When this is over, I'll probably... Or maybe... I, you, maybe, you're maybe might, you might be right. I'm yeah, right. it might be that high. Yeah. Well, I just think the, the, the lifestyle of uh, city life is so fragmented, and yeah. it's so difficult to find nourishing community. Yes. And space and time and, yes. and nature yeah everything is hustle hustle bustle you know so it's it's challenging in urban environments yeah mm -hmm. damn yeah i like how just straight up you were with that yeah yeah i i, I mean we, we you listed also like you know diet like food as another one of these that could be a massive contributor as well when we're eating fake foods mm -hmm. we're much more likely to experience mental health issues mm -hmm. yeah than when the you're body eating mind well connection food. yeah absolutely so there's like there's going to be a lot of variables to crunch but mm -hmm. the urban concrete jungles that we live in and the way that 
then how that further structures the way that we have community and these healthy mm -hmm. relationships and all these other variables that we're talking about yeah. versus actually putting your hands in the soil, growing food, all this type of stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what do you do for healthy relationships? Like mm -hmm. let's talk family, let's mm -hmm. talk uh, intimate partners, mm -hmm. let's talk friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you, how do you do that for yourself and how do you recommend others do it? Sure, sure. So that's shifted a lot over mm -hmm. the years. Um, but again, I think one big answer is dealing with your trauma. Um, with regards to family, I had a lot of resentment towards my father and many other members of my family. And it wasn't until I was able to process that fully and grieve and come to terms with that, that I was able to re-enter relationships with them that were much healthier, and um, and same goes for friendships. And How do you get your family to grieve with you? <laughs> yeah, Dude, family is so hard to crack. Family is very, you know, Ram Dass has that quote, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family. family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's such a good one. Oh. Yeah, it's, I mean, family is the, the hardest one, I think. Um, you definitely need space and time away from them. Oh um, yeah, so there was a great comic. It was the 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 monks uh, having their last test at the monastery, and it was like, now for your last oh, test, sure. you must go and sit with the family over Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and then the monks just sitting there at the dinner table, <laughs> trying to like be meditative while there's chaos yeah, happening yeah, across yeah. the family. Yeah, it's that a that very it. humbling experience. Yeah. <laughs> you think, well, yes, I'm an enlightened Buddha. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, one week with the fam. Yeah, go do that. Yeah. Right. Okay, so how did you get to the grieving with the fam? How'd you mm -hmm. open them up like that? Um. Well, processing my own trauma with, mm. a, with a therapist, but then having done that, I was much uh, more capable of bringing up issues between us in a very compassionate and calm manner. Yeah, I wasn't projecting, I wasn't blaming or you know demonizing them for what they did. I was okay at that point. I've I process the trauma and the grieving. And so that invites them um, to be more open and vulnerable instead of being on the defense. Ooh, I love that. So, so approaching our families in a more, in a way after we've ourselves have looked at ourselves in the mirror and worked on our own honest, true trauma that we need to integrate ourselves. And then we kind of approach them with a more compassionate angle, mm -hmm. not in a not in a way where we're trying to project something, mm -hmm. some sort of change they need to do, but just to ask a question mm -hmm. and to be kind and gentle and loving. Mm -hmm. That's been totally working for me as well, and mm -hmm. I know many others. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. What about um, intimate relationships and friends? Um. So yeah, I mean, similar principle. Okay. There is. Um, Definitely certain experiences related to friends that were traumatizing in the past. And for a long time, that blocked me off from cultivating deep new friendships. Um, same goes for intimate relationships. Mm. If you don't heal a broken heart, mm. you, you don't have the capacity to enter a new romantic relationship. Um, so short answer again, Process your trauma. Yeah. How would you heal a broken heart after a... Mm. Yeah, it seems like the one of the important things that I've learned is just to do as amicable of a job as possible in relationships that, that split up, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, intimate or even like, you know, business related and whatnot, mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm. Be as l loving and amicable as possible totally. about things. Yeah. Easier said than done sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like I said, if, if you have harboring resentment, it's much harder to be loving. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if you've, if you've processed your trauma, mm -hmm. you, you're much more likely to be at peace and you can part ways more amicably. You know? mm -hmm. And then where does 
also on the holistic mental healing, where does the where does where do other basic things like sleep or exercise mm -hmm. where do those kick in and how do you how do you handle those how do you recommend mm -hmm. others to handle those sure well again i'd be intuitive sleeping intuitive, intuitive sleeping. Exercise. <laughs> i love this <laughs> just the few, i'm gonna have an intuitive protocol intuitive eating. Yeah, yeah. yeah um for me, it's different. You know, I exercise two or three days a week. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on what injuries I have, it shifts. Mm -hmm. So I like running a lot. I play soccer. Um, but it's definitely incredibly grounding. I mean, if I go two weeks without exercise, I can sense mm. myself mm -hmm. with brain fog and being moody. And it's not good. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, very tailored and specific to individual needs and capacities. Mm -hmm. And on and on the sleeping side as well. Mm -hmm. um, I got a nice mattress. Yeah, that's a big key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a good book I haven't read it yet, but I listened to the podcast Matthew Walker. Yeah, why we, why sleep. we sleep? He's mm -hmm. on fire. We love him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's great, um, and that that really blew my mind about how important oh, sleep is. So it's, yeah, very crucial. Fundamentals. It, like you know? makes it makes a ton of sense. It's like oh yeah, I've lived. 26 years and like what I learned today I have to integrate with the 26 years of memories mm -hmm. like that's why we sleep yes like, it's it, defragmenting yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of like makes a lot of sense yeah I mean yeah. you go insane if you don't sleep yeah for a long time totally. sleep deprived yep so important yeah and there's also like tons of simulations that we run about <clears throat> during sleep so like we're Mm. constantly running simulations in dreams. Dreams? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of I'm I'm simulating tonight. I'm simulating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enjoy your simulations. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on the way to bed. Have I you ever lucid dreamed? Actually? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah lucid dreaming is amazing. Mm, yeah. I've done it a few times. Yeah. I don't know how I did it, but I wish I could figure it out. <laughs> yeah. There's like yeah. massive keys. Such an easy one. It's just like... Looking at your hands, right? I don't, I don't know. I was just, I was just gonna say, the easy one is uh, just to do things like think about yourself in control before you go to bed. Mm. Like, also, don't think about negative shit. Like, think about positive things and try and like manifest your destiny into the world as you're like going to bed. Like, be thinking about how you're building and like what you're working on and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or like, if you really want to go and like, like go and like planet hop like to different star <laughs> systems or like whatever you want to do, just mm -hmm. like. Really just, you want to go like in the bottom of the Mariana Trench, whatever you want to do. But then intuitive like... Intuitive hopping, right? Intuitive hopping. <laughs> this is a good... <laughs> right. yeah, but but you're, you're going to yeah. bed while you're um, thinking about that and right. being in control. And then the higher propensity for that also occurs. But then... Right. Yeah. There's a lot of... Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a big one. Now, mm -hmm. other, other core areas for holistic mental healing? Mm -hmm. Um... I think we touched on the big ones. You know, I, I think I mentioned connection to nature. Yep. But that comes with healing trauma, I think. Yeah. Um, that's a big one. So. And then what about our own journey? Like, we were talking about this a little bit before the show started, but like these first couple principles, like the first principle, you're born, it's like, remember, we all come from source. Mm -hmm. The second principle is, what is your purpose? Why'd you come here? What mm -hmm. is your North Star? And mm -hmm. how can you most effectively endeavor towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you, how do you feel about those two as like first principles and this notion of North Star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, really resonate with the North Star notion and as well as coming from source as we're born, although I don't remember what happened before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but... Uh, in terms of finding your North Star, if that's mm -hmm. where you're um, notice what you're excited about. What makes you come alive mm -hmm. and pursue that. What do you spend a lot of time researching, listening to, and being interested in? Yeah. And there's also the notion of um, Ikigai. Have you heard of this? It's Ikigai? Ikigai. It's a Japanese principle. Ikigai? Yeah. Ikigai. Mm -hmm. So it's... Um, Four concentric circles. Okay. And in the middle is Ikigai. That's your okay. that's your North Star. Okay. So it's what you're good at, what the world needs, what you can get paid for. Yeah. And I'm forgetting the fourth one. 
Yeah, what you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those are, yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. And the North Star's right in the center of those. Yeah. They're that's overlapping. What, that's, that's what they're overlapping. Yeah, they're circle. concentric circles, right? Or they're concentric, meaning completely embedded within each other? No, 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 no just no, overlapping. Overlapping yeah, circles. Overlapping. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. so that's how I approach the North Star. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. And also, there's got to be like a little bit of vigilance with like this notion of like what are what are you like enjoying doing because we can like catch ourselves being subscribed to certain maybe media sources or certain Mm. activities that we think bring us enjoyment Mm -hmm. but are really actually extremely detrimental to our psyche and Mm -hmm. our mental health etc so it's like yeah yeah deprogramming yourself deconditioning Mm -hmm. it's important yeah. Um, yeah, there's this idea of like false resonance, right? Uh huh. So you might think you're resonating with something, yeah. but you're really just, it's a wound attachment. Whoa. You know? Um, Bernhard Gunther? Yeah, had him on the show twice. You did? We love him. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. he has a great article on false resonance yep. that you guys should check out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we so. may go do it a third time mm-hmm. going down to SoCal uh, tomorrow. So nice. already in touch with him. Mm-hmm. It's a good point. We should do, should do that again. Mm-hmm. Um, how about a spiritual bypass? Mm-hmm. What is that? Mm-hmm. How do we avoid it? That kind of has a little bit of like that false resonance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Totally. Yeah. yeah, so the notion of uh, spiritual bypassing is using spiritual ideas or practices to prematurely transcend the more difficult, messy human side of life. So difficult emotions, difficult issues, um, obligations in your life. Um, An example being um, you are neglecting your daughter um, and you justify it by saying, I mean, this is a pretty extreme example. (laughs) I don't think this is actually the case. But uh, you just start by saying, it's okay, everything will be okay. You remember I was saying, like, fundamentally everything mm. will be okay? Mm-hmm. You use these absolute spiritual principles to bypass the more relative truths mm. about the nature of our lives in the world. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's often the case when it comes to grieving. If you, let's say, lose a loved one. I mean, this was the case in my life when I lost my best friend in high school. Um, spirituality was... A crutch that I used, and albeit a necessary crutch for a long time, but eventually um, it sabotaged my growth. And but what, what I really needed was to process my emotions and, the, and grieve. Um, yeah, instead of attaching to spiritual ideas. So this this one's nuts because it makes me really reflect more deeply on my own life trajectory and my own instances of have I really been authentically working on myself and not mm-hmm. just bypassing mm-hmm. with thoughts like that and mm-hmm. then also just like on a on a level of everyone's you know spiritual journey it's you know how well are we facing these relative truths um, versus just trying to you know, bypass them mm-hmm. this also reminds me of what you were teaching about with you called it the spoonfuls of cosmic juice. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like yes. people are kind of like not taking their time to integrate a mystical, mm-hmm. spiritually developing experience. Mm-hmm. And instead, they're just diving right back in. Right mm-hmm. back in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it makes sense why. Because when you have an, a mystical experience or a peak psychedelic experience, you might enter a very blissful state. You might feel totally connected to yourself and others in nature and you think, ah, okay, this is where I want to be. But then it wears off. And you think, how can I get back there? Mm-hmm. So you constantly go back for that spoonful of cosmic juice. And eventually it becomes poison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Relying on something exogenously to get you to interconnected with source mm-hmm. is 
a recipe for disaster. Well, well, not even exogenous. I mean, you can do a flotation tank. You can do. You can be addicted to breath work. You can do mm. all sorts of practices mm -hmm. mm. that enable mm. you to to bypass integration and to, and to really learn. So you're constantly getting that hit of bliss from whatever practice or methodology may be, instead of doing the hard work of integration, applying what you've learned from the, the experience, embodying that deeply yeah. before moving on to have another peak experience or a new, you know, whatever, so. That's such a massive principle. That's another important one to flag. Mm -hmm. Really do the integration, mm -hmm. focus on that. Mm -hmm. it's something I need to get much, much better at too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm spending a lot of time on having different conscious evolutions and then I just need to have more time on just really reflecting and integrating. That's such a key mm -hmm. principle. Right now I'm doing a lot of writing on it or maybe mm -hmm. recording a video on the subject, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. which Journaling, helps. Journaling, processing in that way. It's very, very yeah. useful. Yeah, yeah that, one, that one's really useful. Um, are you familiar with right hand path versus left hand path? Mm -mm. Kind of like, you know, we, f we fall from grace from source and then the idea is that, okay, like we got to reconnect to source, right? We've been mentioning that. Mm -hmm. And so then one idea is this like right hand path, which is this like pure path of like meditation and mm. sincere self work and mm -hmm. yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Left hand path is like, I'm going to do drugs and I'm mm -hmm. going to do uh, BDSM, I'm going to Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah. Um, I think it comes down to intention and uh, awareness. You could have you know, you could be participating in a right-hand path in a very unhealthy way just because you might be meditating and using these pure methods, let's say, to reach enlightenment doesn't mean um, it can't be toxic. You could spiritually bypass by just meditating every day instead of dealing with things you know you should be dealing with. And same goes for the left for more obvious reasons. Um, Yeah, so I think it comes down to, yeah, intention and how you're utilizing practices from both sides. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sex, tantra, you can use tantra in a very healthy way mm. to mm. to spiritually grow. Mm. Music, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be all toxic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then how about... Um, this conversation that we had at that Consciousness Hacking event, mm -hmm. this notion that, is it possible that more people will heal mentally and holistically faster mm -hmm. and more effectively around our world? Can we increase the level of consciousness around our world mm -hmm. faster and more effectively by helping people meet their basic needs? Mm -hmm. And we see it being proposed in a multitude of ways. One of the ways is this basic income mm -hmm. that is being proposed in run little trials of around the planet. Mm -hmm. And then people are countering that and saying, what about universal basic assets? What about mm -hmm. basic asset ownership? Mm -hmm. What about the North Star thing? You're giving people money or assets is mm -hmm. cool, but, but like, what about North Stars? Like, to like the stuff to have a, something to wake up to and be passionate about every day. Mm -hmm. But is that easier to find if they have that little bit of like safety so they don't have to worry about food and shelter? Yeah, walk us down your thoughts there. Sure, sure. Exactly what you were saying. Um, it facilitates the process of finding your North Star because your attention isn't scattered trying to meet your basic needs. Um, and also having the psychological security of knowing if I choose a different path in life than the one I'm currently on. I will be okay to a certain degree. And that gives you space and time to really dig into um, your own curiosities and passions that you might have otherwise neglected because of, you know, a nine to five dead end job or 
Um, yeah. So. And then, what about like, on like a simulated level, like, what happens with this redistribution of assets or of wealth? Like on a, just a simulated level, like run the simulation out a couple of years. Does it mm. seem like that there's still a good way to incentivize people to want to achieve their dreams and earn a financial success, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not feel like there's some sort of like a cap or a heavy tax on them, mm -hmm. but that there we are still really taking care of the community, our, our neighbors, our most vulnerable people, mm -hmm. enabling those North Star journeys to be more effective. Mm -hmm. Can we really balance those out well? Mm-hmm. With the basic assets, you mean? Yeah, with like a, a balance between people still feeling like the economic redistribution of mm -hmm. wealth and mm -hmm. assets mm -hmm. is simultaneously, yes, helping those most vulnerable that need those, those North Star journeys more effectively, but also doesn't put some sort of like a, a, an inhibition on people to achieve oh, financial success. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. So Yanis Varoufakis, mm. he talks about this a lot. Um, he's a Greek finance minister, but he talks about um, UBI is much more, uh, much better at liberating people because it provides a foundation, whereas most welfare provides safety nets, mm. and nets are very easy to get caught in. Mm. Right? Um, there's a lot of perverse incentives that comes with a lot of the basic assets um, in terms of when you reach a certain financial bracket then you lose it then you lose your benefits yeah. right so yeah. it disincentivizes people from working mm -hmm. and pursuing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. different things in life but with the UBI you get it regardless mm -hmm. and you can apply it whatever way you want so it gives you more freedom damn it's gonna be crazy to see what the United States China and the, these other economic powerhouses around the world decide to do with the automation age and uh, wealth inequality and mm -hmm. yeah it's just gonna be really interesting to see what happens yeah the facilitation of the North Star journeys is critical mm -hmm. um, bringing people most meaning mm -hmm. meaning their basic needs mm -hmm. um, because that those creative fruits get to be expressed to all of us and shared by all of us right two questions that we ask our guests on the way out mm -hmm. of the shows mm -hmm. first is are we in a simulation <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think that's very similar to is there a God question. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Why do you say that? Um, because if we are, then who is the simulator? Who is mm. Who created the simulation? Mm. So it must be some kind of mm. God figure. It just, yeah... The, um, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's it's not as relevant to my my own life whether or not mm -hmm. in the simulation. But mm -hmm. it may soon become more relevant to all of our lives once we have the power to run our own. This is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to become way more relevant mm -hmm. with computational capacity and mm -hmm. um, immersive experiences and mm, virtual, virtual realities, reality. all that kind of stuff. It's just yeah. going to be crazy. Yeah, we're already running our own little simulated experiments of all of all different sorts but when you can do it on like a planetary level and mm -hmm. ooh, how did they discover language mm -hmm. how did they discover the internet you know you, like and just be able to watch how people engaged on those what yeah. is the most beautiful thing in the world ooh. that's a good one yeah <laughs> um man I want to say music. I like what Jordan Peterson says about music. He talks about all these different layers coming together and aligning. Mm. There's something deeply resonant about that for me. Yeah. It reminds me of divinity. Yeah. Everything coming together. Mm -hmm. And like the symphony that is civilization in all of us as our notes. The symphony of life, yes. Yeah, of mm -hmm. life, yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to play our tune our instrument and play yeah. music together yes yes tune the instrument and play the note play yes. the music all together yes that actually brings us to the gem thing too it's like tuning it is kind of like getting the dust and mm -hmm. stuff off and then 
playing it is bringing it up, sh having the light shine through it, you know. Mm, and f and fracked it up. <sighs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this has been such a fun episode. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been great. Yeah, thanks so much. A good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super fun. Thanks appreciate for coming it. on. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for all the great work. Mm -hmm. We, it's such an important topic, holistic mental healing, mm -hmm. and all the components that you broke it down into. Thanks mm -hmm. for doing that and mm -hmm. doing the work. And hopefully, it resonated with other people that have been tuning in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode and the topics that we talked about. Let us know what you're thinking. Have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media about holistic mental healing and all of these little subcomponents we talked about. Have more conversations about go and take control of those aspects of your life more vi vigorously and bring them to fruition. And check out the links in the bio below to Tony's profiles. Check them out. Help support him. Support us. Support Simulation. Our links are below. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the educators that you believe in. Support them. You can find our PayPal, Patreon, cryptocurrency links below. Also, shout out to Ori Shapira for producing. Thank you very much, Ori. 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 <laughs> And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you soon. Peace. Cool.